Yep. Hello. No. Up, up. There we go. Hello and welcome to Shady Stone Creations. My name is Johnny and welcome to a workshop that isn't mine. Today I'm restoring some furniture. This is a chest of drawers that I've had in my room for, oh, I don't know. Um, well, probably since before I was born. And we have all of the drawers for it over here. It's a lovely piece. It's uh, all walnut, I believe. If Steve, who owns this actual proper workshop rather than my equivalent of a shed, uh, is to be believed, uh, you can tell that I've owned it for a long time because it's still got sticks of frogs on it that I put there, I believe, when I was about five years old. So I've got some brass handles and things. Once I am done, it's not even going to be this colour. It is actually going to be that colour. I can do a time lapse on this camera. Just like that. It's day two! It's all sanded. There we are. And there's two other little things that I've done uh, since, <laughs> since the camera battery died. Wood filler. And that's uh, this stuff, which, as I was trying to squeeze it, it exploded. So that's definitely expired. But the wood filler itself was actually brilliant and it matches quite well. I know it doesn't look like it does on the camera, but don't worry, this is going to be sanded off. The other thing is that all of this side panel is going to be painted grey anyway, so that just needs to be nice and smooth. And the other final thing that I did, this front panel was unfortunately just bowed a little bit. You just sort of see it on there, it's not quite flat and level. So I tried to glue it along the edge, but sort of being how it is, it hasn't really glued sort of... Uh, perfectly smooth but 
it's better than it was before. So I think the first job today is take those clamps off and then start cleaning it ready for paint. I do hope Steve doesn't have to use this bench because um, once it's painted, it is going to have to sit there for a bit. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> right, let's set the tripod up and start getting on with this. spirit which is essentially white spirit but it's clean for the environment and doesn't have any um well, it's odorless it's non-toxic it's non-flammable it's safe for the, for the environment and things but all i want it to do is make a rag wet and get rid of all of the <sighs> that and all the contaminants that are in the wood then we get better paint adhesion so i need to go and find a rag <laughs> Pausing the time lapse. That's why you do the white spirit bit, because all of that was in the grain. That would stop your paint adhering to the wood. Do this, trust me, it'll work. Now, while this is drying, oh, and I turn my gimbal on, I can say about boing, this white spirit stuff. Now, it's brilliant because you can stick it on your hands and it doesn't hurt it. It's not harmful to any of the wood or anything. I've forgotten to do that front face. I'll do that in a minute. But it is worth saying that when you do this whole cleaning the surface thing, it's putting a liquid on the surface. Fair enough, that's quite obvious. However, what it's also doing is replicating what it would pretty much look like with a satin or matte finish of either lacquer or varnish. So all of these sanding marks that you can see here that I've done with the sander prior to this would show up if you put just a coat of lacquer or varnish on because it's not quite gone into the grain so yes you could argue that I need to put more white spirit on and yes you could finish it with more lacquer but if you were going for a very very polished surface that is essentially what it would look like and that's not good so if you are sanding and you don't think you've got quite a good enough finish clean it with white spirit or clean it with the uh, I've got some pre-paint stuff which is actually for car body but exactly the same principle do it with the white spirit and you'll see what it looks like before it's finished save you a lot of time right i've got my paint i have a brush because it says apply by brush get my knife back out shake 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 pull that open nice and easy lovely Da, 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 da. Yes, yeah, so we've got nice and swirly there at the moment, so we don't want that. We want the most uniformed colour possible. Oh, it's running away. Don't want that. Don't think I can do this one-handed, so I think I might have to... Um... Yeah. Cool, start the time-lapse.
one last thing to do before I go home. Having finished all of the painting, got all of the drawers done, front, sides, backs, no, not backs, front, sides, tops, that's the word I meant, and all of the chest of drawers done, then even if you're going for the shabby look and you want brush streaks in and everything, go back and have a look, because somewhere there, there will be rooms and you can simply just go there and just collect them. So that's going to smooth out now, but it's not going to have a run. And we go and check, we've got a bit of a run down here, so we can just collect that. All of the ones on the actual uh, tape, they don't matter, but you can just get it out from the corners and it makes the tape easy to remove when it comes to it. Now I can get a bit just from that corner as well. And underneath there. I don't think there's any... Oh, it's a bit of a run down here, so we can stroke across that. But we're looking good the rest of it. We haven't got any runs under here. I don't think we need a second coat of paint on anywhere. I think it's looking quite, quite good. So that's it painted. It's not looking that bad, actually. Uh, the next thing to do... paint the edge with bits white. I've already masked it up, make sure I don't get any uh, overspill onto the lovely grey paint that I spent so long doing yesterday. Uh, I don't need to do any white spirit or anything to prepare because it's already prepared. It's great. So all I need to do now is find a paintbrush. I did want a smaller paintbrush than this, but I haven't got one, so never mind. Right, set it up to a time lapse and get on with it. Is that uh, that should be both the drawers and the uh, chests complete so yeah there we are we have the finish now I've tried to make the finish pretty much of the whole thing as perfect as possible because I know that I can make it look really good now and I can rough it up later whereas if you do a rough finish, but then you decide, oh, I want it neater, it's just more work later, so. The only thing to decide now is, do I take the masking tape off now, while it's still drying, or do I wait until it is completely dry to come back tomorrow and do it? To be honest, I did also deliberate whether I've painted the wrong bit white. I was thinking maybe I should have painted the centre white instead of the outer. However, the thing that made me decide to do the outer, one, was because I'd already masked it up, but the reason I did decide to do that in the first place was, as it stands here, we've got grey side panels and we've got a grey front, but then we've got white at the top, 
grey, white, still grey in between that. There's white that separates the grey at the bottom. Then, with the draws, if I'd painted the centre, it would be grey, then grey, then white. But I decided grey, then white on the outside, and then grey on the inside. It might be the wrong decision, but I've still got some grey paint left, so the worst thing is I go back over it, and it gets an extra paint of... an extra paint? An extra coat of paint. Well, that looks quite good. Sorry, I'm going to do the rest. Oh, this is difficult to peel and uh, film at the same time. Let's just hope, once I do put it all together, that it looks as good as it did in my head. I'm a bit sceptical at the moment, but we'll see what happens. So here we are again, and unfortunately I forgot my gimbal today because uh, for some reason I thought, it's okay, I don't need to film anything, I'm finished painting it. Of course, I haven't finished it at all. Today is putting on the handles and doing the the aging antiquing then then neither of the words that I wanted anyway I'm taking some sandpaper and I'm rubbing bits of the paint off <laughs> still got to do the top remember but we're gonna save that right till last but yeah, the, the paint finishes has come out quite well. Unfortunately, we've got some uh, bits of overrun there where the masking tape wasn't quite as accurate as I'd hoped. But once you get the handle in place and once you do a bit of rubbing down, it disappears. It's a case of just rubbing down a little bit to make it look aged. So, you know, you, you get bits of uh, flaking of the paint coming off in different places. And uh, the bit that it's especially done well, as well as on these corners, is up here. See, that to me looks like it's been worn properly. That's where it it just comes alive as soon as you do that. Um, once you get used to just just doing a little bit at a time, it starts to look quite nice. There, there is a chance that I take these off and I start to edge them a bit, but at the same time, you know, they've just got a bit of natural wear and tear where I've been using these for years and quite like that. I have 120 grit on at the moment but I'm swapping between 120 for the rough stuff. I've got some 400 here ooh, which appears to be damp for some reason or was damp at some point and then for the absolute final smoothing out of things which I will show you in a moment I've got some 2000 grit but we'll stick to the whatever this was 120 I haven't been doing it with the grain or doing it uh, in any complex way, but it's just rubbing it down enough. To make it seem worn and old rather than just looking as oops, looking as if it's been stamped. There we go, I've just added a scratch to that, but that does actually look, you know, quite well, as I just said, worn and aged. Oh well, now you can see at least what it is now. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy with that. And then, you know, just little bits in places. There's, there's no science to it. There's no particular complication. It's just rubbing it off in different ways. And well, I suppose it's the same way the entire way down. Just the crucial thing is about all of this. Ugh. Oh, it's much easier with a gimbal. Don't take too much off. The simple fact is this, you can always rub a little bit more off and then a bit more off and a bit more off until you're happy. And focus on the whole thing, don't just do one area at one time. So I'm going to go over and do this light amount on the whole thing. And then 
a little bit later I might go, you know, it needs a little bit more in different places. Then you can add more tarnishing and more uh, sanding to it to take the paint off. But if you go at it in one, do a hell of a lot in one place and then go, hmm, that was a bit too much. You've then got to start the paint process again. You've got to add the paint back on and then take it off and that's going to take another day. So just go easy with it and take the wear and tear. Like I could get away with a bit less on there, maybe, but I quite like that as it is. I could get with a get away with a bit more on these corners. But the other thing, actually, think about the extremities and where things are poking out. Obviously, people are going to hit this corner more often than they are under here. So don't wear anywhere there because, well, they're going to hit that first. Little logical things like that. But crucially. If you are doing a project like this, have fun with it, otherwise there's no point. <laughs> now that it's all sanded and rubbed down, it's time to finish the top. So that needs, well, sanding and rubbing down. Let's start the time lapse. That'll do. Now it's time for finishing it with something. Now, Steve did say that he had some wax somewhere. Um, thing is, I'm not quite sure where, so I might just have to use the stuff that I've got. You know, makes sense. There we go, vintage Primax. Prepare the work in the usual manner finishing with fine glass paper. Well, that's sanding paper. Technically, I've done that. Apply bry wax, rubbing well into service. Leave surface, leave for a short period. See you, Dave. Oh, so, <laughs> wax on, wax off. Okay, I can do that. I've dropped it. So in that short break where I just turned the camera off, uh, my mate Hans came around and he just went, oh, that's really nice. Oh, you're putting bry wax on the top. Oh, you better be careful with that. And then Bob rang me and he asked, how's, how's things going? I said, oh, I'm about to put bry wax on the top of it. And he goes, oh, you've got to be careful. You can eat the paint. I think I might mask the paint off. I really wish I'd, uh, I'd, I'd kept all of those strips. I have, but they're over there now, covered in sawdust. Oh well. Right, I'm going to stick this on a time lapse and we're going to see what's going to happen. see the difference that's making. So I think with a polish off on that, that'll come out really nice. Oh wow, yeah, okay. Didn't expect that, blimey. That's even good enough to do finish on a guitar, that is. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Wow. Excellent. Oh, 
<laughs> okay, that's making a difference. It's not from your angle, but... shining red. I think that means it's time to stop filming and now that I've got to this stage where all I'm doing is buffing it off I think you know what it's gonna look like at the end so let's just switch to what it looks like once it's finished I'm put into that corner for the photographs eh?